I am. John chapter 8, verses 56 to verse 59. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You're not yet fifty years old, the Jews said to him. And you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. If you ask me my age, what would you say if I told you that I lived before Napoleon? You would probably smile and might suggest that I needed to go to a hospital. Jesus shocked his listeners when he said, Before Abraham was, I am. Abraham was considered the father of the faith. He had lived hundreds of years before Jesus was born. Jesus also said that Abraham looked for him. Abraham expected Christ. Sometimes deep and wonderful things are conveyed in just a few words, in just very simple words, and that is true here. In the words, I am, are depths that we could not begin to exhaust and hardly begin to explain. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us things about himself. He uses many different figures of speech to tell us who he is. For instance, he tells us that he is the Good Shepherd. He tells us he is the way, the truth, and the life. He tells us he is the light of the world, the bread of life. But here he says simply, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. This reveals the identity of Jesus. Jesus tells us who he is in many ways. What he did tells us who he is. His teachings tell us who he is. If we are asked, who are you? We may say, I'm a preacher, or I'm a company employee. Jesus said clearly for all ages to hear, I am. Maybe you think that is an incomplete answer. Maybe you think that he should go on and say more, but actually that simple answer, I am, is full of deep meaning. It tells us who he is. It tells us that Jesus is God. The I am points to his deity. You may remember when Moses was in the wilderness. He was told about the great work that he was to do. He was to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And he asked about God's name. This was the answer that was given in Exodus 3, verse 14. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. God told Moses that his name was, I am that I am. That means the eternal existing one. And he said to tell the people that I am has sent me to you. I am then is God's name. When Jesus said, I am, there could be no mistaking what he was saying. One reason we know this is that the Jews took up stones to throw at him because they believed that Jesus was blaspheming. Why? Because Jesus was claiming to be God. He was using God's name for himself. There have been many people through the ages who admired Jesus. They agree that he is the best man they have ever heard about. But the Christian's faith is far beyond that. We believe that Jesus is both God and man. Until we believe in his deity, we do not understand his identity. 
This is a question we all must answer. And it is a question on which much depends. Who is Jesus? Is he only a man? If Jesus were only a man, then he would be unable to act as our mediator for us. He would be unable to do fully what we need to be done. If Jesus was only a man, even though he were the best man of all times, still that would not be enough. We need more than just a good man, more than just a good teacher, more than just a good prophet. We need one who is both God and man, one who can stand between God and man, who can bring us to God, one who knows God fully, and yet one who knows man completely, one who is perfect in his manhood, but who is also perfect as God. Is Jesus God? There can be no mistaking what Jesus said. He said, I am, meaning that he is God. This is the reason that the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is worthy of all our worship and praise. This is the reason that we sing, All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. If you do not know who Jesus is, I would urge you to read the things in the Bible that tell us about what Jesus did. Could a mere man do the things which Jesus did? Could a mere man say the things which Jesus said? If Jesus said the things about himself that he said, telling us that he is God, telling us that he is the good shepherd, telling us that he is the life, if those things were not true and Jesus said them, do you mean to say that a liar could perform wonderful miracles, but a liar could love people as Jesus loved them? That a liar could forgive people's sins and could give them hope? That people would forsake their lives to follow a false teacher? But Jesus is who he said he was. The things which Jesus did show who he was, and the things which he said tell us who he was. Jesus is the I Am. This is his identity. He is God in the flesh. This name, I Am, reveals his eternity. Christ is eternal. He has always been. There is no beginning for him. In the book of Revelation, the same words are used of Christ as are used of God. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, which is the first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Literally, Jesus is saying, I am the first and I am the last. In the book of Isaiah, Jehovah, God said, I am the first and the last. And so when Jesus is saying, I am the first and the last, he is telling us that he is God. And it speaks of his eternity. To go back to Abraham would be to go over a thousand years. Jesus existed then, but that is not far enough. We learn that Jesus was present at the creation because he is the creator. We must go back before this universe then, but still we would not begin to understand. For we think in time words. Jesus was before the creation of this world. When Jesus was born as a tiny baby in Bethlehem, that was not Jesus' beginning. 
It was simply his coming into human life. It was taking upon himself the form of a man. It was Jesus entering our history. But Christ existed before that. He existed from all eternity. He has always been. Jesus Christ was with the Father. He was with the Spirit. From all the beginning, before our minds can even conceive. Time has no meaning as far as the existence of Christ is concerned. He is the Lord of time. Time is his creation. He was before time. We say, I was. But Christ says, I am. For he is the eternal one. When God told Moses, I am that I am, he was saying, I am the eternally existent one. I am the one who exists from all eternity. He is the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. And when Jesus says, I am, he tells us that he is the eternal God. Sometimes little children ask deep questions. For instance, how old is God? When we ask this question, we're thinking in time categories. Christ is no older now than he was when he spoke these words. Age has no relevance to him. He is the eternal Christ. He is young, always. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Some of these thoughts must have been in the thoughts of the one who said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is far greater than we can ever understand. Paul well knew of the greatness of the eternal Christ when he wrote these words. For he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Colossians 1.17 We do not need some teacher just for a few years. We need an eternal teacher. We do not need a guide for just one or two years here. We need the eternal shepherd to guide us. We do not need a savior for now alone, but we need a savior for yesterday and today and for tomorrow. We need a savior for all eternity. And Jesus is the one we need because he is the eternal one. He is God from all eternity unto all eternity. This name I am reveals his sufficiency. We are dependent beings. We depend upon other human beings every day. We depend upon farmers and the food that they can provide. We depend upon people to uh, work in hospitals and to provide medicine. We depend upon uh, people to get information to us. Uh, we depend upon teachers and schools. There are so many different ways that we are dependent people. Sometimes if you listen to people talk, you would think that they're totally independent. But that's really not true. We are dependent beings while we live here. But Jesus Christ is not dependent upon others for his existence. He is the I Am. And he does not depend upon other people for that existence. He existed before there was anything. He is not dependent upon the earth or the universe in any way. It is dependent upon him. We are all really dependent upon him. Without him, our physical life would not be possible. Without God, you would be unable to live for one moment. Without him... You could not breathe. You are dependent upon him for the very life that you have, even though you may not believe in him. If we talk about someone independent, we must talk about God. We must talk about Christ. He is not dependent upon others. He is not dependent upon this world or this universe in any way. He is totally independent. He is the Lord. He is the I Am. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, 
I am the good shepherd. He was saying that he is able to meet all our needs. He has the wisdom to do so. He has the will to do so. And he has the power to do so. He is sufficient in himself. And he is sufficient for all the needs that we have. The Bible tells us that God is triune. We believe there is only one God, but this one God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now you may say, well, I don't understand that. Well, there are many things that we don't understand, but they're still true. Just think of yourself. You're a very complicated being, but God, who is the eternal God, is far more complex than we could ever be. If you just think of a human being, there's the mental part of our life, there's the spiritual part, and there's the physical part. And it's difficult for us to understand how all those things are related. The Bible tells us that God is one. There's one God. But this one God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he is fully sufficient in himself. He has been that way from all eternity. He has always been complete and sufficient in himself. And he is able to fully meet our needs. Isn't it foolish that puny men sometimes whine and act as if God cannot take care of them, as if he cannot meet their needs? Why, this living God who is from all eternity has all power in heaven and earth. He has all wisdom and knowledge. He knows all about you. He is present every place. He knows where you are. He sees you as you are right now. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows the rebellion that is in your heart. He knows the weaknesses that you experience. He knows the troubles that you have right now. And none of your weaknesses, none of your problems are surprises to him. None of these things tax his ability to provide for you. We sometimes say, that's impossible. And that may well be true for us. There are things that we cannot do. Even if we want to do them, we can't do them. We don't have the power to do them. But Christ is different. Of course, he does not violate his character. He does not violate his word. Christ will never do something that will contradict himself. He will never do something contrary to his character. He will never do something unrighteous. He will never do something sinful. He is holy, and he has always been holy, and he will always be holy. He would never do anything sinful. He is full of love, and he is always loving. He has always shown love, and he will always do so. And he will never do anything to contradict his character. There are no limits as to his power, as to his love, as to his presence. Consider his presence. Though we do not see him today, he is still very much present in the world. Now it is true that Jesus returned to heaven. He returned to the Father. And there he is our great high priest today. He is interceding for us. But Christ as God is also omnipresent. He is present every place. Jesus said this to his disciples before he left the world. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Christ is with you today if you know him and you love him. He is where you are. He is also with the Father. He is able to meet our needs. If we could take a space trip to the farthest reaches of space, he would still be there. We could not go beyond his presence. We could not go beyond his power to help. His power was not limited to the New Testament age. Sometimes people wish that they could have lived while Jesus was here on the earth. They wish that they could have seen Jesus heal the sick. 
They wish they could see Jesus lift the dead and give them life again. They wish that they could see Jesus open blind eyes. They could see Jesus cleanse the lepers. And it would be wonderful to be able to see those things. But Jesus is the same today. Jesus has not changed through all of these ages. He is still able to meet the needs of people. You do not have a need which goes beyond the ability of Jesus Christ to meet that need. Maybe you think that your sins are so many, that they are so terrible, that God could never forgive you. That's wrong. Someone has pointed out that even if your sins were far worse than anyone else who has ever lived, even though they were far more numerous than anyone else who has ever lived, yet God is able to forgive those sins. He is able to meet those needs. The Apostle Paul called himself the chief of sinners. That means he felt that he stood at the head of the line when it came to sins. And yet Paul, who was guilty of persecuting the Christians, he was responsible for the death of many Christians, God forgave him. He met the living Christ on the road to Damascus, and his life was changed forever. That was the discovery that Paul made, that Jesus Christ was alive that Jesus Christ was present and working today. My friend, you may leave, live in some very lonely, out-of-the-way place. You may live in some village where there's no electricity. You may live in some village where there are few modern conveniences. You may live in some place where it seems that the rest of the world knows nothing about you. You may live in the most insignificant place in the world. But there you can meet Jesus Christ, the eternal Christ. He loves you. He's seeking for you. He knows about you. And you can enter into a personal relationship with the living God, the God who created all this vast universe, loves you. He has a purpose for you. And he desires that you be a part of his family, that you be one of his children, that you live for him and that you experience his love and power in your life. His power is not limited to any particular country, to any particular group, to any particular age. He has more power than we can understand. What are the, our problems to the one who spoke the worlds into existence and keeps them running? What are our problems? when we rem remember the power of his love that was expressed at the cross. Think about Jesus every day and know that he is the ever-living one. He is sufficient. He is able to meet your needs, not only today, but every day. The worst thing that may happen to you in the future will not go beyond his ability to meet those needs. I am. What Jesus said tells us who he is it shows his identity. It reveals his eternity. He is from everlasting to everlasting. But it also reveals his sufficiency. He is able to meet all of our needs because of who he is. Sometimes a little child runs to his father and he says, Daddy, I want this. I need this. And if it's within the power of that father, maybe he says, all right, let's go to the store and buy the notebook that you need. Let's go to the store and buy some cookies that you're wanting. We too may run to our heavenly father. We may bring our needs, our burdens, our problems, and we will find one who has the ability to meet them. Sometimes an earthly father wants to help his children, but he doesn't have the ability to do so. He doesn't have the money to provide for their needs. He doesn't have the wisdom to help them solve their problems. He doesn't have the other resources that his children need. Maybe that father wants to give his children a good education. He wants them to go to the best schools. 
but he simply does not have the resources that are needed to put his children in those schools. He has the desire, but not the ability. God has the desire, and he has the ability. The Bible tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God has the desire. He also has the ability. We see his ability when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And through the ages since that time, millions of people have met the living Christ. They have experienced his power in their lives, his power to forgive, his power to save, his power to cleanse, his power to heal, his power to teach, his power to provide all of our needs. Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the answer to the needs of men Jesus answers clearly I am he is God he is eternal and he is sufficient only such a Lord is sufficient for your needs today he is the Lord he is the Lord of all he is the Savior would you believe him would you follow him would you live for him would you bring your needs to him today? Would you come just as you are today? Come even though your heart is full of sin? Come even though your heart is full of confusion? Come even though you've followed other ways? You've believed wrong things about Jesus for a long time? You come today to him. You will find that he will respond to your needs today. Jesus invites you to come. He says to you, come and follow me. Can you respond today? Can you come today? It's just as simple as that. Would you trust him today? Invite him to come into your life and to be your savior. You will find that Jesus Christ will meet all your needs. He will satisfy the deepest desires of your heart because he is savior and Lord. He is the savior of the world and he is the Lord of all. Jesus is the great I am. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we praise you that you know all about us and you're able to meet our needs. We pray that people will come to Jesus today, trust him as Lord and Savior. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.